not the song at all. Oh my gosh, my voice is dead. My voice is gone. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the B&O stream today on the... Uh, what day is it today? <laughs> I haven't even checked. It's the 14th of November 2022. I hope you're having a wonderful week or have had a wonderful week already. Um, my week has been very tiring, but uh, tiring is always good. Let's move the mic. There we go. No, yeah, tiring is always good because it means you did stuff. Like, I don't know. Um, so today is the, yeah, it's the middle of November. Uh, what does that mean? It's stinking hot here in Australia land, but that's okay. Um, I hope you're having a relaxing time. Uh, I have my cold one. I'm gonna chug it eventually. You know how it is. Always a stream cold, cold bottle of Mount Franklin trademark water. Is it like right? It's reticent, so it's gonna be ah. Here we go, sweet. So yeah, so today uh, I'm playing a brand new game. Well, brand new for you on the channel. Me, it's not new. Uh, and for many people, it's probably potentially one of the oldest games I've played on the channel. Let's see how easy I can switch over to it. Here we go. Uh, oh boy, how are we going to do this transition? Here we go. Switch. Whoa. Easy. Easy money. Game Boy. Licensed by Nintendo. Check out this logo. You ready? Ooh, look at that white on pale cream. Wonderful stuff. Uh, and you've got a director immediately right there. Two, well, artists. Composer, I think. I should know my people more. Chance I have to involve with this. Dragon Warrior 1 and 2. There was, a, there was an and in there. I don't know if you can really tell. Um, but uh, this is Dragon Warrior 1 and 2 otherwise known as Dragon Quest 1 and 2. I've named the stream Dragon Quest because I feel like naming it Dragon Warrior means you're not going to know that it's Dragon Quest. Uh, this Game Boy Color release in 2000, and Game Boy Color only, um, is a uh, combination of both 1 and 2 on the same cartridge. Um, it's uh, Dragon Quest is a franchise that I have not played too many JRPGs, and I think when I had a, a very brief... Entry into playing Legend of Heroes. I think I'd said I hadn't played really that many. Then I played all the Dragon Quest and I was like, man, I got hooked. So let's jump into the first one. We're only going to play the first one really in this kind of quick set of few streams. But Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest 1. I played the original NES version and it made me realize how pure JRPGs can really be. And how like honest and just straight fun the mechanics can be. You don't need a crazy grand story filled with crazy complex characters. You don't need, like, ridiculous mechanics stacked on top of each other. You just need a guy, a set of abilities, and a leveling progression, and a clear quest. Pretty much. Uh, and that's Dragon Quest 1, in a nutshell. It's not a crazy long game as well, so I should be able to beat it. Um, maybe not in time for Christmas, but eh, we'll, we'll try our best. Uh, the music is great it, as well. Um, obviously, there's now full like orchestral kind of variants of everything in the newer games, but when it came to you know what was delivered on the NES or even in this case the Game Boy, you know, oh, I love switching tabs only to cause my computer to have a headache. It's a great theme though. It's it's got all the motions. It goes places. It's got its loud bombastic bits. And it's never been changed. It's remarkably the same in virtually every game since the original Inception. I just thought, let's just stay on it. I know you can hit A, you can skip it, but you got you gotta have the music. So other than that, we got three save slots. I don't think you had more than one save slot on the original NES version. On the Famicom version, you had a password. Uh, there's not too many differences between the um the different versions of the game as well. There is a uh, um. SNES version as well, but this Game Boy Color version starts off with a cutscene. There's additional context with some space invaders and a big dragon. This art is great. I love, like, I'm a big sucker for, like, late Game Boy art because people knew exactly what they were doing with it. It's super, it's super, like, well detailed and completely captures the, the art style really nicely. Again, there's another space invader up there. I know there's supposed to be, like, bats or dragons. Um... Well, yeah, no. The princess has been stolen. Welcome in the distant past. 
The gods gave Lotto the Light Orb. With it, he drove away the monsters that lay siege to the land. But Draco Lord, evil incarnate, emerged from nowhere and sealed the secret orb in darkness. Without it, darkness will swallow the world. Extinction will soon be for us. Brave Bindo, we implore you to defeat Draco Lord and recover the Light Orb. Take what you find in the chests. They should help your quest. Speak to those in my chamber. They will give you worldly advice. Let us meet again, brave Bundo. When the game starts off, it's as simple as it gets. You got a chest, in it is 120 gold. You got a second chest, it's the torch. The torch is useful. And in this one is the key. Very useful, but it's like, it's a bunch of stuff to start off. Uh, the game, granted, the Game Boy is just not powerful enough. You just used to overlay a few screens when you hit the button. Uh, but on the Game Boy, it kind of just kicks out to its own menu. Um, unlike the NES version, though, it, you can just press A on people and it does talk, interact, it does stuff. Do you know of Lady Laura? No, not really. Lady Laura is the king's only child. You should know that. After the queen's passing, she has been the king's source of support. It's been half a year since she was abducted by foul monsters. Wait, I'm, I'm quizzing you on this one. <laughs> the king makes no mention of it. I can't begin to imagine the torment he must be feeling. Bundo! I beg you to rescue Lady Laura. So yeah, yeah, you may notice that like I only got four letters to name my character. I appreciate you get to see that if you wait as well. Um, and a lot of the characters have their names kind of shortened. Laura has a much longer name that I can't remember. I know Lotto used to be called Erdrick in the original version. I think that's a fuller name than Lotto, but uh, but yeah. I think the king heals you. I, I can't recall. Either that or he is the save. I think he is the save. Um, but other than that, you got your, you know, your typical RPG things. You've got a bag full of items, you got some stats, you can cast magic if you learn magic, and you can equip things. It's as simple as pie. Pie? When you leave- pie seems very complex. When you leave the castle, you will see a town. Buy some weapons and armor there. If you are wounded in battle, return to a town and stay at an inn. If you checked all the chests, you should have found a key. It can be used only once. When you open the door with it, your journey will begin. So yeah, you got you have to use the key there, uh, and you can also press A to check on the foot. But yep, there goes my key. So that's okay. So hopefully I know what I'm doing, but I don't really remember a crazy amount of this game. But I know enough off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, no, this castle is nice and big, but mostly you have people to talk to, and also you get told off that you don't have a key. Ah, Lady Laura, where's she now? Have they already taken her life? Oh no, what a horrible thought. Bumbo, please forget what I said. Sure. Hey, did you know? Is it really shocking? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going here. I'm, I, I'm just gonna go south, I guess. I, I'm not gonna say I guess. I've played this game before, I know. Uh, there's a lot of people to talk to, but I think ultimately... It's mostly exposition and things about the world's trash. Now, obviously, on screen, there's a town right here. Also, this this overworld music is just... It's classic. It's so good, but it captures the feeling of overworld. It's great. You got a town here? Welcome to the town of Tantagel. Obviously, you know, what is Town Design 101? Person telling you where you are. Many brave young men have left this town only to die. Bundo, I hope you won't perish. Uh, sure. I love these buildings as well. They're nice and like, you know... <laughs> you got this nice little, like, interior thing. I buy and sell weapons and armor. What can I do for you today? What was it you wanted? Uh, now, obviously, you got a few different weapons. Uh, the Game Boy Color version is super nice because it tells you exactly how much, uh, well... Yeah, what slots, and also how much your stats actually change from this, which is really nice. Um, so... Definitely the Copper Sword is a bit out of reach. The Club might be nice, because 7 damage feels a bit low, and also... Uh... I can't do both the Club and Cloth, so how about let's buy the leather... The, the leather. <laughs> that's it. You paid for it, so equip it! Anything else? No, that's it. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's an item shop as well, and the item shop will... Oh, there's an inn. How much for the inn? This will be useful info. Welcome to our inn. It's 3G a night. 3G? Nah, man, we're in a 5G household here. It's 
slide on over. We've got more buildings. Hi there. Did you know? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Did you know? No. Rumor has it. You can buy keys in some town. Ah yeah, so keys are also kind of elusive. They tell you about the keys now, but... I study curse lifting spells. If you're ever cursed, come here. I'll be able to help you. How nice of him. The harp of the legendary bard, Garen, was buried with him. Lovely, like, fun town stuff. So, I feel like the history of, like, RPGs, and particularly, like, JRPGs, really doesn't get that much older than this game. I know, like, they exist, and obviously a lot of these games really, like, pay homage to games like Ultima, um, or uh, Wizardry. Wizardry is really popular. Here you go, here's your item shop. <laughs> yeah, no, it has it. A D scale. I forgot what the D scale is. I think you equip it and you get, like, one defense stat, which... It's 20. Let's commit. D scale. Here you go. Anything else? Oh, well, that's it. So if I go into my inventory now... D scale... There you go. So you equip the D scale. Uh... It, it just counts as being equipped, but it's just, uh, it's there. It gives you one extra defense. So I got nice, nice lots of defense. But there's probably more than one extra. Uh, but other than that, uh, this game is also fairly pure. There's not, like, there's no other party characters. There's no other... There's a couple of towns, but other than that, it's you in the wild. You go out and you fight cute little monsters. Like that. See? I'm awesome. Now, I think the only thing this Game Boy version does is it changes the amount of health all the enemies have. Um, experience curve is pretty similar. Um, the enemies are the similar. I, they only have less health, except the bosses have more health. Um, so much so. I think the final boss has like seven times more health than he does in the original NES version. Which, uh, will make the game kind of interesting, but I don't think it'll be too, too weird. Uh, I guess my only gripe about this game is uh, the gameplay is a grind loop. It is the solid principle of the game, but it's also like, you know, you're getting two experience points, you're, get, you're going up the ranks, and eventually, you know, you'll level up. Uh, the other kind of weird part about the map, not weird, but like an interesting part about the map design, other JRPGs have taken note, is uh, the different terrains will make it more likely for, for enemies to appear. Um, and, uh, I believe- I'm looking this one up because I need to completely break it down myself. Um, the enemies, uh, the variety of enemies that you get depend on just the square. There, there is a square where, like, stronger enemies appear, and you gotta, like, not throw yourself off on that one. Uh, oh my gosh. Enemies map. What an enemies map. There you go. There we go, so you are now promoted to level 2. Your max HP rose by 7, your max MP rose by 0. We're still not there yet. Uh, also, I'm gaining money. How much was for the staff? 60? Or was it 70? We'll play safe, we'll go for 70. So we just wander around, we kill some enemies and uh... Call it a day eventually, so... Oh! Sometimes the enemies get the leg up on you and sometimes you get the leg up on the enemy. Um... This game also, by the way, it's very ultra simple. It's like, sometimes people like uh, RPGs for having multiple playstyles. There's no multiple playstyles in this game. It is, like, you level up, you are getting the same... Actually, no, I take it back. Your name actually determines some weird array of stats that you start off with and what ends up scaling. Um, other than that, though, from that point on, Everything is just, you gain experience, you level up, you gain the same spells at the same levels. I'm going to the Wooders site. The Wooders site has my back. There we go. Wooders.com. What does Wooders mean? I don't know, but... I relied on them so much for my Dragon Quest IX playthrough, which, uh... Listen, if I'm gonna play all these games at some point, oh boy, IX is gonna be the most... odd one for me to... to get through, but... Oh, that, I think we're seeing mostly slimes. There we go, overworld monster map. This would make my life so much easier. Wow, this is not the simplest map, but you know what, I'll accept it. So, yeah, so the map's broken down into effectively square chunks. And the square chunks have, uh... 
just different encounter rates. So we're at zero, we get slimes and red slimes. If I go a bit more north, I'm gonna get rackies as well. Which, I don't know if I feel too confident in getting. But I guess the nice thing as well is if you die, you lose half your money. It's kind of annoying, and especially when you get near the end of the game, and you don't want to drop on- you don't want to drop your money. But, until then? You know, I don't know. Dropping your money is a mild inconvenience, because you're leveling up. You're getting some progress. Maybe I should bite the bullet and actually, like, fight them, because I'm, like, one-hitting, like, the, the weak slimes. And granted, the Game Boy Color version, again, it's making it a bit easier. But, nothing does stop you from going too far north and encountering super duper bad enemies. Or, kind of annoyingly on the map, sometimes it's like you walk past, like, a corner of, like, one of these enemy grids, and then it's like, yep, you are now just fighting, like, way stronger enemies all of a sudden. Give me a Drakey. Okay, we're not getting a Drakey, apparently. I am victorious still. I am the king. Uh, but... Yeah, your main character is a bit of a nameless and... Honestly, voiceless kind of slate as well. He just kind of... You know, he goes out, he, he rescues the princess. That's the plot. Like, there's not even any, like... Mysterious lore to it all. I guess the the mythos is kind of what people invent into it. And how much of a, like... You know, I guess projection? Projection is the right word? I don't know. We're not getting a Drakki, are we? This, uh, we can totally find Drakis here, but... Just not really finding any right now. Uh... There we go, we're level 3 already, jeez. So, le level 3, we earn a new spell, heal. Which is very nice and convenient. Um, because, uh, healing items are not fun to use, really. No one likes using healing items too much. Unless you... Do you like healing items? I don't. I just take them, you know. Let's go south, because I need to buy that stick. There could be better things to buy, but... I'm buying the stick. Look at that, I got a giant sword and shield. That's how, that's how you know they sell weapons and armor, because they literally have weapons and armor. Okay, well the club is 60, so let's go for it. You paid for it, so equip it! Uh, and... Do I sell the last thing I had? I didn't have anything on me. Okay. Well, I guess we continue on, so... Also, I feel like I should get the shield. Now, the one thing that kind of gets a bit annoying is that uh, when you level up, your health and magic don't come back. As in, you don't get the, the new health and magic you gained, like, as points. You're stuck at- hey, there's a Drakki! Yeah, okay, he dies in one hit as well. <laughs> I give a bit more experience, so... Um... But, uh... Yeah, so, like, even though I just got some, some magic... I'm still on 13 health and no magic. Which is a bit of a shame, but... That's okay. 6G! Wow! You know? Bieber 6G already. Gosh, be Beaver 6G. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know, like... I guess we're nearing the end of the year. We've got all the sales coming up. I've made some terrible impulsive purchases, and I shall continue to make impulsive purchases, but... Uh, you know, we got those Black Friday deals and all, all the other seasons or stuff coming up, so... Uh, just remember, don't buy stuff unless you're really gonna use it. But never feel tempted that you might miss out on something, because if you didn't have too much of a need to d use it, there's probably better ways of going about it later. Even if it's video games are about to be delisted. Like I'm playing Need for Speed uh, Payback right now. I remember riffing on Need for Speed Payback back at that EA E3 2017 video, and I basically said, it doesn't look like the speed I need, and turns out, wow, this game is atrociously average, and atrociously dull at the things that do stick out to me. Um, So the bit, the first thing that I absolutely hate about the game is the dialogue. The characters are super cringy. They're just like, they're just going on about, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's in the name of the game, Payback. But it's like, 
they were robbing a, a multi-million dollar car off a big, like, rich guy. You could say, oh, eat the rich, but it's like... I don't know, like, the game never told me why he deserved to have his car stolen. And they still stole the car in the end. Uh, and then, uh, the person who set him the job... Like... Backstabbed his... Crew guy? So they all got caught because of the story, they stole the car, and the main character had to work for the guy whose car he stole because he's nice and didn't want to turn him over to the house. The house is the evil big money corporation that also bribes every single cop and therefore can do illegal things like bribing racers to make money and they run casinos, so they must make their money illegally, but it's perfectly fine in the system. But then they also bribe cops to keep doing it, so they must make more money than the money that they would get by bribing the cops. But then the question is, where is the money coming from? Like, who's the suckers who knows? It's a spooky! It's a spooky! <laughs> Uh, I love the names of some enemies. They're not like, there's not too many in this game, but when we get to like four and onwards, whoever does the localization, they got like real wacky on the names. Still, I love the name The Spooky. The Spooky is so good. There's another Spooky. It's great. Oh, the Spooky attacked. Here we go. Four experience points isn't much, but like, I mean, it starts adding up. Sub Diabetes, how are you doing? Oh, you already prepped me with the uh, the Dragon Quest emotes. Hopefully, I do see some Metal Slimes later. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've only got 63 experience, but you know what? 63 adds up. So, how about let's go back, let's heal. I don't think I've got a check on the foot. Uh, oh, I've got enough for the shield. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, I always walk way too far south as well. I will say, uh, Diabetes, I have played this game before, so no mystery on, uh, how to play Dragon Quest, but definitely mystery on how well I'll do, as well as also how well my name does in this game. You caught me ranting about Need for Speed Payback. So, uh, anyway, the story's a mess, but also the characters are super cringy because they are completely unlikable and they're jerks to everyone. Um, just do that 63 another 500 times you got itself another playthrough, or got yourself a playthrough. True, true. Uh, so let's buy the shield, which is 90, so I'm glad, I'm glad I've got just enough for that. I can't recall how many shields and armors there are in the game, it's not like a crazy number. Um, because there's only like, really a, like a handful of dungeons in the game. Yeah. I'm definitely wiping out all these things as I go, I tell you that. No point in running, just just fight things, you know? Nice and simple. I've got two spells. Uh, one is heal, which I believe... Does heal heal you for about 30? I think it's about 30. And then uh, in battle, I've got fireball, which uh, has soon been called uh, fizz. I think they call it fizz now. If you play the newer games, it's, it's basically fizz. Um, here we go. So anyway, uh, I've alluded to this doorway. Oh, it's super dark. So what you do is you use your torch. And, uh, I think your torch disappears when you exit the place, but you can just buy another torch. Uh, what is the layout on this place? I have no idea off the top of my head, but, you know, it's a dungeon. Let's just follow the left wall. I swear there are enemies eventually. This is the right wall, really, not the left wall. Oh, look at that. I love how the music gets slower as well as you keep going deeper. I can't even re remember, is there anything, like, super crazy worthwhile down here? I mean, you're gonna get the, you know, the ultimate reward that you're really looking for, but... It's a fun effect, this, as well, because it still gives you that feeling of being cramped, and it's kind of bizarre of, like, the darkness not, like, patching it, but here we go. Bindo read the stone tablet. My name is Lotto, to my descendant. 
to reach the demonic island that can be seen from Tantigel, three magic implements were needed. I use them to cross the sea and defeat the Lord of the Demons. I will entrust the three mystic items with three sages. Their descendants will guard them. When evil returns to that island, collect the items and fight it. The three sages are waiting. It is your duty to go, my progeny. Progeny? Progeny. That's, yeah, that's actually it, really. We, we came down here just to get told that there's more to do. I'm not too sure if anyone even, like, responds to, uh, like, you reading that, but eh. You know what? It's neat. I just wish the enemies came at me, apparently. Let's get that fast with music. I think the dungeons are perhaps a bit larger, like, as in floor plan wise as well in this Game Boy Color version. I cannot remember for the life of me though. <laughs> Alright, the exit was here somewhere. There it is. There we go. Okay, uh. Well. Oh, my eyes. You know, it's like, oh, geez, there's so much more space on screen. There we go, so. Then you get into the actual game of Need for Speed Payback, which it originally... It starts off being lots of, like, scripted story sequences, which is exactly what I called out the game for being. But eventually it then builds into this idea of, oh, in order to get back at this person, I must enter the Outlaw's Rush, the greatest racing event uh, the place has ever seen. Uh, obviously the inns get more pricey because they're jerks like that. Um... So it's like, okay, but it basically sets up, like, here's all these racing gangs, and uh, I, I saw it, the monster flew off with the princess to the east. Is there someone who'd save her? Nah. The poor princess. <laughs> you came from Tantagil? There was a cave on the way, yeah? That's where they put up a memorial for Lotto, the legendary hero. Okay. Um... But the problem with the racing gangs is that they're all... Also equally unlikable. They have main characters who- this is Garenham, the town of folklore. They all have characters who are jerks. Almost all of them, except for one. And then your character was a jerk to them. And I was like, they don't- no one deserves this. Uh, so this guy sells even better weapons like the Iron Axe, which is pretty cool. Uh, they've still got the leather thing, but they've also got a uh, chain and iron as a shield. Um, it would definitely be nice to get to the iron, but... They're super expensive. Like, I think this game kind of knows, Hey, you're probably gonna do a bit of grinding. Hi there. May I sing for you, stranger? Yeah. Uh. Thank you. I'm practicing in hopes of becoming like the legendary bard Garen. That didn't properly, like, Seinfeld me, did it? No, he just did a thing. A long time ago, the Bard Garen ended his long journey here and founded this town. The town is named after him. Oh, Garen Ham. Did he, br did he bring home ham in the process? There we go, so... Uh, I mean, I could buy another torch. I might as well. Then I'm holding onto another torch. So here we go. Uh... This town is kind of just here. I think you can keep going around, but it's kind of oddly not the way to go. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I go south from here, I might get a stronger enemy. Uh, I should be able to get the enemy now. You should be like chilling around here somewhere. Nah, not the Drackey. I want him to show up. I'm gonna take out some few Drakies on the way as well. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the maximum level in this game as well is, um... It's 30. Uh, the experience does kind of grow ridiculously past level 4. Um, like, it's it's basically like, you need to double your experience every level you get. Um, but your, your max ex experience only reaches like 65,000, which sounds like a lot. Especially when I'm getting like 6 experience off an enemy. Three experience, sorry, even better. Um, but trust me, it gets a bit better over time as well. 
Uh, but yeah, no, rival gangs kind of annoying. Um, uh, the, the main reason why there's different gangs is so that they can uh, wall off the different kinds of events. You've got your typical race events where you race along a highway and realize you can't steer. You've got... Uh, it's spooky. Uh, you've got drift events where you realize that drifting is kind of awkward. You've got off-road events where you realize that for some reason there are roads in the off-road. Like you can drive off-off-road, which makes you even slower. It's really weird. Uh, also, it makes you realize that the cars that aren't built for off-road uh, or atrocious when you kinda off-road. Um, what makes a car off-road? It's off-road class. It's like, I'm driving like a, I mean an Impreza is like an off-road car when it's a rally form, but like when it's the regular like suburban Impreza and you get like four-wheel drives and the four-wheel drives just like, they kinda go off-road. It's kinda odd. I'm not gonna get the enemy, am I? Nah, not really. Not really. I really want the enemy, it would be a cool enemy if he showed up. Not... He's, he's not showing up. Oh well. Um, the one kind of event that, like, or like, string of events that feels kind of interesting is, uh... So your main character is in a gang of three different people, and there's a very disinterested female character who goes on to basically, like, be in, uh, like a spy. Like, into the villains. Um, and basically all that means is that their events are not typical race events, but you're like driving around a person who actually gives plot exposition. Um, which is like, it, it's exclusively their events, and every chapter they have events that just gives plot. The other characters are just, oh, you suck at racing, I'm gonna make you race my friends instead of me. Okay, you really suck, I'll, you won't get so lucky next time. Ooh, you really, really suck. If you beat my friends, you're, I'm gonna have to do it myself. Oh, you beat my friends? I'm gonna have to do it myself. Done. You beat me. Something, 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 somehow they're, they're gonna rep you in the... I don't know. It's very bizarre. Um, the whole thing is written like a bunch of, like, bored directors. Uh, re bored both, both senses now. Um, but it's like, they just got together, they were like, this is trendy. There's live streamers. And, like, subscribe- they did the subscriber character twice! They did the same character twice! Uh, we got, like, the- the- the kicked out of the city gang, the rich kids gang, the, um... The- oh, we- the- the all girls club, which I love how the all girls club, like, the whole point of them being all girls is so they can make reference to how they're all girls and how, like, Oh, we get the best airtime, and then I watch every single AI driver drive off cliffs. <laughs> I don't know why they've designed the game like this, but sure, okay. I actually had a bizarre glitch where, um, the, like, the female character that I was playing as, um, decided to not T-pose, but just stand up, pose into the top of the car. Um, I'm level 5. I don't think you get a spell at level 5, you just kind of keep going. Um, I don't know if I just actually keep going. So, yeah, so if you keep going on from, uh, from, uh, the, the town, because I think the town's just south of here, you'll eventually, like, run into a lack of, well, you'll run into the, the stuff there. You gotta walk on these bricks, which are gonna hurt you, apparently. It's Poison Swamp, but it's not really conveyed, um, actually, it's conveyed pretty well now, but... But I think that hurts you for one pop ago, which is, uh, it adds up. I think there's also a bridge more north, and I could have just taken the bridge. But I thought, eh, going through the toxic swamp seems more fun. I'm really just swinging these enemies, am I? So I'm pretty sure there's a bridge. Here we go. Now I'm across the bridge. Okay, don't go south there, because there, there is more heat down there. There we go, there's a magic drachy. Or a mag drachy. I definitely got more health. I love how there's like, there's not too many enemies in this game, but there's definitely like, reskins as well. But you know what? It's kind of the charm of it. There we go, there's a nice little town up here. Hello, welcome to Cole. Pretty sure I gotta step on the flowers and... Okay, he is 
is walled himself all the way over there. Would you listen to this? The husband of Cleo there left town in search of some keys. How could a man just abandon his pretty wife? What a louse. That's fine. I'm over it. I don't want to be a burden for him to chase his dreams. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, I see how it is. Look at this item shop up the stairs. What are you doing there? Hmm, this shop doesn't have the legendary sword either. Perhaps it's not for sale. It's the legendary sword. Oh, doesn't have it. I've definitely got a fair bit more money, but look at this! We've got the iron armor and then the steel armor. I'm very certain the steel armor is like... The... It's like... There's... I think there's like two pieces of armor better than it. And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, we're already kind of able to buy late game stuff. Because this game isn't crazy long. I, I gotta keep reminding that. Like, I guess I've been playing for 35 minutes where I've been wandering around and now I'm level 5. You ever played the original Fallout? I beat it when I was level 11. You must be much stronger than you look, yep. <laughs> you gotta make sure that you, you uh, hype yourself up. Hello, this is a hot spring bath. Heck yeah! I can't go in. What's this, the cloth? Gotta check dresses. The straw seed. Hello, big boy. How about a powder puff massage? Just 20G, honey. Yeah, let's do it. We got the puff puff, baby. Isn't it nice? This is, this is, this is the only reason why you play the game, for your, uh, <laughs> mildly suggestive scene that you have to pay money for. So I think you can use the straw seed. Yeah, and it gives you just some sats. If you find those straw seeds, cool beans, because they're definitely worth it. Ah. Why you got the damaging floor? The bloodkin of Brave Lotto. Your weapon will not be enough to defeat Draco Lord. Somewhere in the world, Lotto left behind his sword. Find it. Cool. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Uh, I gotta check my health. How much? 22? How nice of them. They've got locked doors over here. And yeah, they're properly locked doors. You need the key as well. But... A man claimed to have seen the most beautiful woman in the cave by the sea south of here. But the cave is infested with monsters. There can't be a beautiful woman there. You must have just imagined it. Hmm. <laughs> sure. I appreciate this guy serves you from way over there. Um, warp wings are cool. I think the warp wing puts you right at Tanticle Castle. Like, just at the start of the game. But it's actually kind of nice, because like once you start wandering out... One a fearsome monster named Golem is said to fear the melody of a flute. Some monsters can't be beaten by just brute force. If you're in battle, consider your opponent's weak points. And then, uh, you could just leave. You could just leave. Uh, I don't think there's really too much to do, really, at any town, because I don't think any line of dialogue progresses anything. 12G, man, he's getting there. But we shall continue. We shall maketh thine way. So I feel like I should probably fight a few enemies here because I don't have like much money at all. The Magdrakis also cast fireballs and yeah, you, know, you see there's a lot of health there. But I also have not healed myself at all, so if I really need to, I'd heal myself. Also, I guess one thing you might know, um, especially if you played later Dragon Quest games, there's only one enemy at a time. This game is very, very kind. It's just you walk up, there's an enemy. You give him a slap, you give him your one-two, and he's dead. It's, it's just that. It's nothing too, too weird. There we go. Here's a new enemy, the Magician. Guess what he's gonna do to you? Also fireball. Very kind. Does he have a bit more health? Not particularly more, but sure. Well, there's this perfect opportunity to cast heal. And there goes my health. It is all healed. 
I love the way the screen's set up as well, because it makes you feel like you're actually going to get more characters, but... Now, Dragon Quest 2, obviously, you know, develops on this first game in some way. Um, but, again, we'll get to that. We treat this game as its own thing. If there's one... I gotta take a step back as well. I, I love the music in this game. Like, I know it's like, yeah, it's it's a bit chip y and perhaps the first Dragon Quest music is a bit, uh, you know, kind of, you know, you got your overworld, your town music, battle music, but it's also like, yeah, I mean, it captures this, like, fantasy element. You got this, like, sweeping, like, you know, battle music. It goes all over the place. It's, it, it's definitely, but it's also, like, it's not fast. It's not, like, crazy, like, you know, doing all this stuff, it's like a bit of a, bit of a romp, a bit of like a brr, 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 like, just a weird tonality makes it feel like you are stomping a battle. The town has this, like, sense of idling with that, like, dum 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 dum, dum, dum that ostinato-y kind of, kind of beat in the back. And then the towns have this wonderful kind of more, um, I guess, <laughs> to be pretentious, a more, like, cantabile kind of voice on the top. Although it also has the stepping. Oh, it's a scorpion! Scorpions are not kind, actually. I don't think I like the scorpions in this game. Oh, they're not- they're really not kind. I think this is the perfect opportunity to... burn an eight. Also, there's attack animations. For the main character in this one. In the original NES version, you just kinda... Like, you press the button and then they flash and that's it. Um, definitely 25 gold. You get a lot more gold from... Some of these enemies, so... It's always worth fighting in the area that you're... Um... You know, that you're supposed to be in. How do you know that you're supposed to be in there? Well, you just take a go at it. Like... There's nothing too complex, you just go in. See if you're gonna die. I'm not getting any agility, am I? Look at the stats going... I'm just getting strength! It's kinda interesting. Kinda odd, but... You know, I'll accept it. Uh, so still another level without, um, an upgrade, but it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I think the, yeah, the max level is 30, but there's not a crazy need to also push for level 30. I think somewhere in the mid-20s, the game can be kind of just easily beaten. Um, I think 30 is kind of just like that push point, and also because, well, we've got, you know, two bites for the experience, might as well use them all. Magadraki. Oh, he's, he's gonna he's gonna clear me out with the fireballs. There we go. More spookies. Yeah. Uh, so I guess here's a controversial topic of the week. Uh, this week saw the release of God of War Ragnarok and. Uh, the critics are absolutely loving it. Um, I have not played it. I also don't own a PlayStation 4 or 5, so I don't have any, like, real ability to play it. But if there's one thing I've heard, is that there are people on the internet who are a bit jaded, because it's not the kind of game, but it is the 10 out of 10 game. And they found enjoyment in the previous game, but uh, I guess the big thing is... If they're not having fun, who is wrong? Are their opinions wrong? Or is the public wrong? And, uh, like, in general? How can you tell? You know, it's like... You, you've really gotta just be able to talk to a bunch of people, understand people's opinions, and then go, Ah, okay, that makes sense. But... We live in the age of, uh, social media, and social media is, uh... An absolutely horrendous thing. We'll get onto that <laughs> in a moment as well. Um... And, uh, yeah, if you voice an opinion saying you just don't like this game and you find it boring, people will think you are either an Xbox troll, because apparently the only thing you can possibly, like, be if you don't like a game is a fan of something else, just one thing else in particular, sure, uh, a troll in general, uh, lovely contrarian, stuff like that, and it's like, it's very tough to be able to express, like, you know, like, there's more nuance to it. A lot of those people were like, when it goes, it goes fine. Like, and, and people don't hate the story. But I think they're definitely... I think the, the main complaint I'm seeing is, uh... 
The game might be a bit of a babby game for them. It might be like super duper easy. And it's like, it never gets hard. It gets a bit trickier and then it's just like, yeah, nah, we're, we're done with this. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, as a, a phrase I've seen and, and you might know of examples of games like this, uh, active cutscene or active padding. Maybe padding's a bit not the right word, but active cutscene as in you are clicking buttons. You're not really pressured in any way, but you've got to click the buttons in order to continue a person talking to you. Whether you're driving from a point to A, you're climbing a mountain, you're solving uh, a very simple puzzle that doesn't really mean much, you're just running from one point to another while a character tells you that you are racing them only for them to beat you because they decide to teleport very close to the end. Um, whatever the case, I think a lot of people have kind of grown to dislike active cutscenes. It's uh, something that... Um, I can't really recall what was like the earlier games that did it. Maybe Half-Life? Half-Life has a bit. Definitely Half-Life 2. Um, but like when it doesn't feel like you're really doing anything, but you're hearing the dialogue and your brain's kind of like, well, I can't take in two things at once. And I'm also not taking like gameplay metaphors. It's kind of like I'm just getting a, a story told at me or I'm just seeing a thing. Um, and yeah, that's a big, that is a big problem that, like, a bunch of games do have. They're, they're definitely, like, they err into that, like, realm of everyone needs to be able to play this game and also everyone needs to be able to beat this game so that, and I'm gonna say cynically, so that we can generate lots and lots of social media attention on this game for a very long period of time. Whether that's a game that's dumbed down enough, but still has lots of grindy Skinner boxy mechanics such that people will keep talking about it. Or, let's just generate a controversy. Let's pretend that the game really has like this, you know, heavily politicized or heavily controversial elements about it and and it'll get attention and people will write articles about it and people will write articles about the articles about it and so on and I'm, I'm going on a huge like long spiel but the whole point is like at the end of the day it's like yeah I mean these are all kind of tactics to just make money and at some point there's like this window where games can make money be completely an artistic vision or some happy medium and ideally we want to make games have that happy medium we want games to make good amounts of money but we don't want games to make crazy amounts of money because crazy- well, for the most part, because crazy amounts of money usually means the artistic vision is copped out. Games like, um, well, Need for Speed Payback, if I go back to it, uh, I reached this point near the end of the game where suddenly the difficulty spiked up super duper hard. I was playing on the hard difficulty, easy breezing, there's a couple of levels where I was just like, okay, the AI is just cheating, but sometimes I just beat them. But then I, f I got near the end of the game and suddenly the AI was better than... I could possibly ever be. Uh, my car didn't have the required upgrades in order to even be statistically better. I had to basically then do perfect drives. Um, and then at some point I just didn't, like, you can't even buy the upgrades necessary. You have to roll for them in the shop or roll for them at the end of a, end of a race. And the only way you can continue rolling for them after you run out of the currency is, you guessed it, microtransaction. This game is just as bad as Middle Earth Shadow of War, but it doesn't have the decency of patching it out. I've noticed my health, by the way. I've, I've, I've been kind of idling and punching people. I should really... I don't know what I'm exactly going to buy. I've got enough of the axe. Should I be buying the axe or should I be buying the armor? Let's buy the axe. There we go. One thing you don't want to like 100% cop yourself out on is uh, spending all your money and then having no healing and no um, like magic, like catching yourself out. Uh, there we go. So I'm pretty sure the iron axe. Uh, Yeah, there's a few better swords in the game, but you do get given the best sword later. I'm thinking this will give me a, a good amount of strength for now. I don't think the other two will particularly, like, super carry me over. Maybe I'll be able to buy them later, but... Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, no, games can totally be that. They ruin the creative vision purely for the money grab. And if you're gonna be a bit, like, cynical on the internet, it's very easy to view a lot of these modern games as... that... exactly that. It's just a cash grab. It's just a game that's trying to appeal to so many people that it ceases to appeal to some people. Uh, and in particularly, it fails to inspire them as much as older games have. Um, which is especially... kind of... you know, it feels... Kind of strong when it's an existing franchise. I love the the swing as well. The the attack is different if you've noticed. So, uh, how much experience am I at? Four four three. I have no idea how far that is from the next level. A bit. Actually, it's super close. Oh, I have defeated the spooky. Okay, no, not crazy close. I would have been the next enemy, but closer. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, I feel like the God of War complaints are valid from a perspective of a person who hasn't played the game, because I don't really have the context to even tell you that you are right or wrong. Um, you got a new spell, sleep. Uh, sleep is kind of nice when it works, and when it doesn't work, it's kind of annoying, but yeah, it does exactly that. It tries to put the enemy to sleep. Sometimes it can be you. Not from your spell, but... I think sometimes enemies do it to you when it's not the most fun. There's not too many effects in this game, but when there is, it's like, yep, okay, that is an effect. 12 gold starts to not feel too much, but when when you gotta, you know, buy a 3,000 gold armor piece, yeah, okay, that's a fair bit. We'll get there. So how about let's wander south? I know, right? Somewhere new. Past the Scorpion. Uh, but, yeah, like, I feel like a lot of AAA games do end up leaning too far into the making money camp nowadays, and, uh, I don't think there's really that many games that do properly capture that kind of spirit that earlier games had. I know, it's like, oh, all the games are better, but, like, real talk. There's not a lot of new games that do feel like that. I think the last one from my memory that I remember was uh, Wolfenstein The New Order. Yeah, it's a AAA game, but it's a AAA game that feels like it's designed like a typical, just regular single-player first-person shooter. It didn't bog itself down with um, crazy amounts of collectibles or really, um, you know, lots of weird replay replayability. Um, kind of had a bit of an aggressive social media campaign, but... Oh, we got another Dark Cave! Good thing I bought... I should have sold my old items. Just gives me a bit of money, I guess. Uh, so here we are, we have the... Cave. This is actually, like, a completely joining cave. I don't think it particularly goes anywhere. And you can also just hug this, like, wall and just keep going down. And you'll make it most of the way there. It's where there's like no enemies. I'm pretty sure there's caves later on with enemies, but for now, oh, that's it. Uh, I think the enemies get a bit stronger right now, so then you've got to do your your gutsy run of okay, well there's scorpions, and I've also got to somehow get all the way to the town while still kind of rocking the amount of health I've got. So I think the town is just about here. But you got metal scorpions, which is not fun. They they hit hard. This is where the game starts kicking your butt a bit. But that's okay. <laughs> At some point, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I should have gotten the armor, but that's okay. Cause now we're in a new, well, we're not in a new town just yet. As long as I don't keep getting metal scorpions or skeletons. Skeletons aren't too bad. I can just whack them. They're gonna whack me, but uh, it's not too bad. I think they're gonna take two hits. Kind of nice as well, just having enemies that are just like, yeah, just take them out, just keep going. So quick, it's so brief. Just, oh. And a wolf, who's suddenly attacked. And he dealt 15 damage, which is not fun. And he dealt 13 damage, and he might be quicker than me right now. Dang it. Oh, Vanna, how could you die? This is rather disappointing, but I'll give you another chance. If you're injured in battle, 
go to a town instead and then... To reach the next level. Oh, he tells you how much to reach the next level. Yeah, okay, let's save the game. Going on without rest? Yeah. Well, let's meet again. So cool, I died. I lost half my money. That's okay, we'll get my money back. But, you know, dying is part of the process. But yeah, no, you, you just go back to the starting town. There is no... There's no ends, there's none of that in this game. You just kind of start again. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm getting encoding lag. Am I? I dropped 30 frames in the network. Why did that, like, alert me on that one? Oh well. Uh... But yeah, I... I on the flip side, it's like, yeah... I, Fanboys get real, real pestery. There is a degree of like, come on, guys, like, uh, like, let people dislike some things because when and like, don't let it ruin your fun as well. Just because people don't like the same things you don't like doesn't mean, sorry, the th same things you like doesn't mean you can't like them for the most part. Once they start making it a problem and it's like, oh, how dare you like the game? It's like, it's fine, but. I think their criticisms can and certainly are valid in places, and I would like to see the games industry move towards uh, much more... Uh, honestly, I still think the games industry should be filled with shorter, more, like, sporadic and gutsier ideas than... I l No, the d scale's still there. I should sell the club and the other one. Um, it should be filled with much more sporadic ideas, because I feel like there is too much safety. There's too much, uh... Where'd he go for the club? I'm pretty sure he buys them for like half the worth, so it's not too bad. The cloth isn't particularly worth it, but that's <laughs> okay. Oh, I can't wander off into the middle of nowhere here. <laughs> Done. This isn't Cantable at all. It's got a trill. How can that be Cantable? <laughs> oh gosh. Um. Yeah, it's a degree of like, yeah, the internet is filled with, you know, bots and other, like, fake social media engagement, and am I getting baited in by completely illegitimate and ingenuous, or disingenuous, uh, kind of interactions? Probably. Actually, probably, but, you know, I, I think there is also a degree of like, if you are, like, getting upset about that, is that just... I mean, it's easier said than done, but like, don't, like, legitimately, just like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. And if you do, don't like something, and people are liking it, don't feel, don't get gaslit into like, also thinking that, like, there's something wrong with you, because, I mean, it's a game, it's, at the end of the day, it's a product to entertain you, and not every game is going to entertain you. As long as you find a game that you like, that's the most important thing, and as long as that game is decently supported, to the extent of like, yeah, like, it's not like a... I mean, I, I would love for other games to be played that aren't really played as much nowadays. I would love more people to play Quake 3 in Australia. It'd, it'd be great fun. And to stop beating me, because I suck at the game. I love having to take damage over here. The Magician. Technically dying is a free heal, but there's no bank, so there's not really any, like, crazy reward for it. Uh, let's see if I don't need the torch. You may be wondering, what's with all these other side paths down here if I'm not going to take him? Uh, we shall return to this cave later. You can get yourself super caught out by attempting to go down the other routes. Oh my goodness, there's enemies in this cave! I think it's because I got the torch on. On? Off. The Ida. It's like a spider eye. The Ida. It does drop money. Look at that! Do who needs who needs torch? And you've got skill and <laughs> no clue where you're going. Uh I am victorious! Okay, uh, I don't know if I've crossed the... I haven't crossed the threshold yet, but I'm probably gonna pretty soon.
Ah, oh, the problem is, like, it was right there as well. But it's like, you gotta go this far south, and then... Look at this skeleton, he's gonna get a cheap hit on me, so I gotta heal. This is my problem, I, I didn't buy... I've, I've just gotta grind for the armor, don't I? Listen, if I die before I get to this town again, I'm going to just grind for armor. I'm fairly certain I've got... Uh, I, don't, I don't even trust it at this point. I'm just gonna heal every step of the way. I wish I had a bit more health, man. 40 just seems so low. Uh, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. This is the town of Rimmeldar. What a wonderful town. <laughs> you may be wondering, we just rocked up at a bunch of towns with a... How about let's, let's heal first. It's 24G. That's okay. Um, we've rocked up at a bunch of towns with very different names, but kind of the same look. Yeah, that's kind of the first game. There's not really anything too crazy going on. There's a guy who sells armor and weapons. Here's the steel sword. I skipped it, but... Eh, I mean, five attack is a lot, but... You can get the magic! And the magic is, I think, the best armor. It's the same as the steel, but it does protect you against those magic attacks. Which is very nice. Um, so that's definitely, I think... Yeah, yeah, it's like half damage from, from magic stuff, so... Definitely something to save up for, but if you can, sure. Uh, although, I think steel armor is probably pretty good, and honestly, there is, like, the best armor in the game, uh, which is found, so... Ultimately, in, at the end of the day, the armor only gets you to getting the best stuff. It's not the best stuff. Who are you? I'm changing here! Please get out! Oh my gosh. Why? I've never seen you before. You should come stay out in. I just did, bro. Hi there. Even a warrior should wear a ring. It's a form of etiquette. Hi there. I am an oracle. I read the future. Ah, you are Lotto's blood descendant. No need to speak. The I say all. Have you gone to the sacred shrine? Yeah. There. Rain and sun come together. Okay, I guess. Oh my gosh, so many people. all my money by monsters. I can't very well just return to call now. Ah. I like how even just like the brief bits of dialogue give you a, a sense of like there is dread, there is this legendary hero somewhere. Well, I guess you're a descendant of a legendary hero and kind of they just acknowledge it, but it's also like, you know, legendary heroes do fail. Wander over here and I'm pretty sure this guy, nope, he just tells you about a rainbow. Traveler, if you would ever meet Lotus Ascendant, please convey my words to that person. It would surely be a help. Oh, wow, well, how well, well, nice, thanks. Uh, that looks like a very, uh, you know, exciting passage. Is there anything in this, like, dead end? Nope. So let's continue around. Now, the one kind of annoying thing, and we'll, we'll find this in a moment, but, uh, actually this is ultimately, like, one of the, yeah, this is, this is the video game design. Notice how there is one bit of space. If you go one step more right, you are out of the town. You leave the town, but here's a person. Gee, where's Rogo? He's late. What could he be doing? Sheesh! Again, don't go too far up or you'll leave the map, technically, but if you walk around and then don't go too far left... Look at this. Could there be any weapon or armor that is powerful enough to defeat Draco Lord? Oh my gosh, 125 through gold. And a death seed. I love being deaf. Here we go. Use that. Give me some four gourd. Four gourds. But look at this guy. Keys. Keys that open any door. Just 16 G each. You gotta buy them. Just keep buying them. You're gonna need as many as you can. I may sell no more now. Come again. <laughs> and he just refuses to give you more than, I think, six. Uh, but yeah, no, that's where you get keys from. Uh, only problem here, and also, you run out of keys eventually. <laughs> well, not as in... Well, uh, like, you can just buy an infinite number of keys, but it's just like... Well, sorry, you can buy six at a time, but you can keep coming back there to buy more keys. But it's like, 
the doors keep closing. It's kind of annoying. So you just need to hold on to keys. Uh, but it's not too bad, because you get to hold them in your inventory. Other than that, we are hanging out here. We're gonna fight some more skeletons. So here we go. Keep finding some more dudes. Uh, so, here's the other controversial topic, and this one uh, is um, a legitimately like. I'm not saying upsetting, because it's not like. But it is tragic. I, should I have gone this south? Oh boy, I, may, I might not have wanted to go this south. How about let's flee? Fleeing, I believe, is just like it's a chance of getting out or not. It's nothing too complex. Uh, I I always have like the hunch whenever a game has fleeing. It's like I always have the hunch that it's like, oh, if you've never fled uh, fled in a while, you always guarantee it. And I really don't know if it's like that, but I always feel lucky enough that like I feel okay. These guys definitely give you a bit of experience. Twenty five is a lot relative to seven thirty eight. So I'm getting there. Another wolfy boy. This time it's payback for taking me out a little bit ago. And he's nearly gonna take me out again. And he's just actually- oh no, I've got him. I've got him on the ropes. There we go. 40, 40 experience. So, yeah, even if you feel like you're struggling, it's like, eh, you know, you'll gain experience. You get there. And ultimately, in the, at the end of the day, the level kind of does, you know, it does push you over the edge. So even if you're struggling on, on our money, yeah, the level gets you over. But like, you know, it is a fun little casual game. It's not meant to really, well, if anything, it is like a granddaddy RPG. But it is also like, not, um, it's not trying to be like ultra hard serious game. It's just kind of... Okay, no. I take it back. This game sucks. I take it back. This game sucks. <laughs> I am I am not making any progress towards getting getting money. Well, let's let's record the save again. Done. Still, still, I think the big thing. I'm only an hour into this game. I'm actually curious how many streams this would take, because I was thinking, yeah, this is like gonna leak into December, but I don't know. Actually, no, I think it, it potentially might not, depending on how slow I take it. The red slime. <laughs> oh, a bit of a joke now. Once you, once you level, what am I, eight, nine? Eight, okay, eight, still. When you level eight, it's like, eh. <laughs> it kind of just there. So there we go. We continue on through the world. But yeah, no, so the, the kind of uh, upsetting story is uh, there's a blog post from Mick Gordon. Mick Gordon is the uh, composer for various games that you may know, such as uh, Need for Speed Shift. Uh, I know that game has a licensed soundtrack, but uh, he is apparently a composer on it. Also Doom 2016, but... Uh, Need for Speed Shift, like, come on. Need for Speed Shift is a much more notable game. Um, and uh, he's got a big blog post basically um, in response to a Reddit thread from a guy called uh, Marty... Marty Stratton? I think that's the guy? He's like a general manager, or he might be a higher up at uh, id, specifically. Um, part of Zenimax, which is now part of Microsoft. Um, and Marty, at some point last year, I think kind of was like the Doom Eternal soundtrack, the OST that was uh, promised as a pre-order um, was delayed and then it's like this is the reason why it's been delayed and he basically points the finger at Mick uh, being uh, kind of incompetent, um, not getting stuff done on time, uh, communication being unclear, uh, 
and they've mutually agreed to not, like, work with each other anymore. Nick's basically like, he, he dishes out a big blog post going, uh, I literally have the receipts, like, this project was mismanaged, I didn't even know about the soundtrack until you guys announced that the soundtrack was going to be a thing. You also slapped Mick Gordon's OST, like, as the name, and he didn't even sign a contract to, to work on it, because he is also a contract, uh, you know, composer. Also, uh, I'm very certain if you check somewhere here... I forgot where exactly, and I, I feel like I've failed because someone was supposed to, uh, tell me about it, and I've just completely missed the, uh, the line of dialogue. Actually, I think it might be in town. It's like a big, uh... There we go, yeah, somewhere here. I'm pretty sure if you check underfoot... There you go, what's this? The pixie flute? The pixie flute is decently important. It, it's decently important. It's just there. Uh, I think the game... I think someone tells you, like, two or three steps south of the... the, um... of the spring is something. So that's how you know you're supposed to go back there and press the A button. Uh, but we shall continue on. We shall keep making progress. But, uh, yeah, no, so Mick Gordon's basically kind of dished... Dish the rap. He's like, yeah, all of these things were mismanaged. Uh, and then he's like, we got these emails that didn't even have levels done. Uh, and that's okay, but it felt kind of odd to, you know, expedite the process. because uh, he's obviously not going to be able to work on accurate level music when there are no levels created. Or even anything about levels. He got some concept art, managed to get some ideas based on that. Uh, then he was like, the other thing as well is that he's paid for the amount of music that ends up in the game, so that encourages him to create good music so it doesn't get rejected. Uh, I think he said he wrote about five hours, or produced about five hours of music, only to basically only really put two or something into the game. Uh, but sure enough, he hears cut content, things that he thought were being scrapped and he definitely didn't uh, get paid for, suddenly appear up in marketing material, and inevitably by the end of the day, the OST was five hours of music. It was filled with lots of music that he claims he'd never got paid for, and he has receipts basically going, yeah, here are, like, all the things I didn't, you know, get paid for, here are all the communications that, you know, told me otherwise, here's the part of the contract that basically guarantees me the stuff. Um, it's definitely a bit of a he said, she said right now, or he said, he said, um, where it's like, you know, mix, uh, claiming this, Marty, three years ago on Reddit, mind you, uh, claims this. Uh, the big kind of take home I want to say is, one, it's messy. This is like, the uh, last place really anyone should be doing the legal battles is on Reddit. Like, which is why when Marty said, try to appeal to people on Reddit, I'm like, oh, you know, that's kind of... I mean, it's Reddit. <laughs> it's like, I don't exactly know, like... Reddit has a lot of, a bit of a bot problem, a bit of a misinformation problem. Um... Oh, it's another spooky. Um... I'm not saying that everyone on Reddit is, is bots and misinformation, but definitely when you get to big subs, and especially big subs, that act as, uh, unofficial front, like, communications places for, uh, big studios. Yeah, it kind of is a bit of a, like, that. Um, like, you can't guarantee anything that you're- I wanted to take one step, so I was off the poison poop, and I ended up getting a battle on it. Um, but a lot of people see this message, see it gets crazy upvoted, and goes, Oh, I'll take my- I'll take their word for it. How could Mick ruin the project like this? After all the good stuff he had done before. Then Mick comes out with this, and suddenly, now people are going, I told you so, Marty was the evil person the whole time. He's just an evil, greedy corporate guy. And it's like, there's probably a lot of nuance that, like, we're not getting, because neither person quite knows exactly how to say their perspective in the most accurate way. They're saying it in their way, and it totally makes sense for them, but 
are we getting the full picture here? Uh, there's obviously a third party who's associated, the audio engineer, the lead audio engineer, I forgot the guy's name, I think Chad it was. Um, he kind of got a bit ripped in both people's accounts, and he's just sitting there going like, I, you know, well he hasn't said anything. Oh, I really hate fighting these wolves. I don't think this game's got crits as well. It's just, oh, they take... They take a bit of a beating, and then they awkwardly, like, attack before me. Oh, but I got him that time. So a bit more experience, a bit more progress. Oh, we've broken the 1,000 experience mark. That's good fun. Um, but yeah, I think the big kind of thing that... Especially people who saw this on Reddit, or Nick's uh, post was on Medium, but he did post on Twitter, um, and then it inevitably got cross-posted onto Reddit. Uh, the big take-home I want to say is, nothing good comes out of posting things on Reddit. I don't know why there is a lot of cases of just pure tragedy, because people get the impression that the community is speaking a certain way on Reddit, when really... Uh, it, it's really hard to actually know. Again, the whole bots and misinformation thing, even if it's not the one posting it, there's a lot of, uh, just things that get upvoted. People see the top result and assume that's the proper stance because the community has upvoted it. I wish I fought, like, the skeletons right now because I'm currently fighting only wolves. They're gonna kick my butts, they're gonna make me lose more of my money again. I can't believe it. I'm on the wrong side of this town. Nah, stop it, man. Stop it. I ain't fighting the wolf. I wanna go back to the town. <laughs> there we go. Safe healing. Um... But yeah, I... <laughs> again, again, it's super messy, and I feel like the lawyers... And, and granted, I guess, like, Mix kind of brought it up, and he's always... He has mentioned that, like, the lawyers have um and erred. Like, they've taken their sweet time responding. Then they go, oh, sorry, we gotta delay the meeting because, uh, you know, a person's sick. Or, oh, no, they're actually in Hawaii or something like that. It's like, you know, if that's legit, there's a, there's a reskin skeleton. A wraith. It's definitely gonna have more health. Well, a little more health. 42 experience points. Good stuff. I think it's because I went a bit south here. I forgot what actually is, like, more south. I think there is a cave, but... We got a druid. There's the sleep. It's not the most fun thing, is it? Just being caught on the backside of a... of a sleep spell. Uh, am I caught out here? Oh no, I'm good. At least he's attacking normally. I wonder if- I think they've got MP themselves, so they can't, like, spam eternally as well. I'll just get- Oh, I got activity relay boosted, never mind. We'll just be fighting enemies, why not? We got the Metal Man himself. There actually exist Metal Slimes in this game as well, and I'm curious if, like, now's the time to go fight them. Let's get that little bit extra... extra health. Problem is that Metal Slimes are just as temperamental as they always are. Um, for reference, Metal Slimes are Dragon Quest wonderful way of gift to the player of we're just gonna give you experience. There's a weak enemy. It's kinda rare, but... There's a crit. There we go. There's a weak but and rare enemy, but you beat him and he drops a lot of experience. And uh, it's kind of a fun mechanic that I'm surprised many other JRPGs don't employ. But it's like, it's pretty cool. Because it's like, yeah, like, you get a lot of money out of nowhere. Money? Experience. You get a lot of experience out of nowhere, so. Oh my gosh, this is Wolf City. It's just wolves everywhere. How much experience we're at? 1290. 1290. 
How much for the level up, I think? Uh... I, I want to say literally the next enemy again. Skellington. Take him out. Oh, he's hitting me in the face. There we go. So now I have Radiant. Radiant is a spell, I believe it, uh... Basically replaces the need for using torches. It does use magic. So you do kind of, you know, cop the concept of using a magic, but you get to actually see things, I think. Which is kind of a better prize than, you know, <laughs> having to buy torches. Torches are super cheap. I mean, that guy dropped 60 gold, and the torches cost 8. And, uh, I mean, if there's one thing, yeah, like your healing items and all that other stuff, they stay at a pretty stock price. It's actually not too bad having healing items, it just takes up inventory. Which doesn't really get used for much anyways, but... Eh, there's only so many you can hold. And you get better value out of using your magic to heal, so... So I'm pretty sure the next level is pretty much double away again. But, eh, we got there. I think level 20 is about, like, 26,000 experience, so... But I mean, it keeps, you know, it grows exponentially, it grows outward. And obviously doing a bit more damage, so I'm getting these wolves in two hits now again, which is cool. Uh, but, yeah, I've been up uh, way too early this morning because of uh, the, uh, not the Brazilian Grand Prix, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. The second last race of the F1 calendar uh, happened at 5am this morning in Sydney time. Uh, and I stayed up to watch it, and it's currently nearly 10pm, which means I would have been up for uh, 17 hours now. And counting. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> I actually had a full night's sleep like before. Like I went to bed at like 9 to try and like get there. So even though technically I've been up for um, a while. I mean, <laughs> my body's okay. Conk. Conk out. I'm actually, I'm real atrocious when it comes to staying up so late. Like, I can? Maybe? I think? But it's also like, it's like, once it hits like 10, 10.30, it's like, yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> like, you know, let's wrap up, let's, let's, let's get to bed. And then it's like, yep, sun's up, but it's not, it's not 6 o'clock in the morning, it's not like that early time. I know 6 o'clock is like super early, but, I don't know, I kind of like being up in the morning. Alright, let's get that in, let's get that healing in the in. So I guess if there's one thing, uh, yes, this game is a bit of a grind, in the sense of, like, the whole gist of it is to battle enemies, level up, and eventually progress somewhere. But you also have to have the confidence in going that somewhere. So I could keep grinding for the, um, for the mad- oh, I'm going for the full plane, aren't I? I could stop at the half plate, because I mean the nice thing is that you get to sell, like, your current armor as well. So like, e even though it's a thousand now, it's like, eh, you, you do get to... Maybe I do buy it, let's just buy the thousand, because then at least I can like, take some stuff. It's like, yeah, it's a thousand now, but then you get to like, sell for 500 later. So you're only losing 500. And if that can get you to, you know, fight stronger enemies, it's kind of a win. Hold on, legit? How much did my equipment change as well? Uh, you could also go for the steel sword, but I don't know. Hold on, legit, I want to see how much that changed. So if I go to equip or item... Leather... Use? Oh, let's just use it. Nope. Equipment. Yeah, it's 12 higher. Jeez. There you go. It's a bit of an interesting menu to equip things, but yeah, it works out. Well, we're not buying, we're selling. We're selling, my my fellow. Q. 
six? Nope. I'll hold on to the torch because eh, it gives you the use of a torch. Now let's fight the wolf. He can't do much to me now. 10 damage? Well, I mean, it's a bit, but it used to be 16. And, yeah, that adds up. That does add up. See, I, I feel like you can go south, but I don't know what actually is to the south. I feel like you'd get wrecked. I can't recall which direction you're supposed to go in. South or... Still getting, still getting mauled by the wolves. I wish I had a bit more health, but... Like, I'd feel confident with maybe one more level, but... I kind of like that as well. It's just... A constant, like, feeling of just... Oh, I just need that, like, one more level. Like, you do feel every level up. I mean, we're only level 9, you know? Game ends at around level 20, 25. So... You know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, especially, it's only been an hour and a half. Game's not crazy long. Not much to say, though, when it's like, oh, wandering around. Don't feel confident really going anywhere. Do I just bank my money on something? I get, I, actually, you know what? Genius thing, I've realized. Because you lose half of your money when you die, and... And, because you lose half of your money when you, um, when you, uh, sorry, not lose, because selling things gives you half your money back, um, you technically don't, like, change any, like, there's no reason to, like, sell, oh, sorry, there's no reason to put your money into items to then sell off as, like, protection, because it's just like, oh, you're just selling it for half anyways. So you might as well just hold on to your money. Or die with it. I can't remember if the second game's got banks, but I know the third one does. So... Skellington yet again. Skellington, Skellington. If, uh, the game kind of just like hits a bit of a brick wall or whether Cause it does feel like might as well demonstrate this as well if you keep going south it's like at some point like it gets like super gutsy like strong for some reason we'll just keep going why not if you die, you die, you know? Money's not exactly the problem. I mean, it'd be nice to have a bit more money to buy the, the magic armor, but... At, at the end of the day, it's not the armor that's the big problem. It's that I just don't have much health. Um, yeah, if you keep going south here, you'll notice there's a bit of a poop water again. And, uh, what is that? That is a, uh... Wonderful cave here, as well as also wyverns! Which are gonna completely ruin my day. Yeah, they hit super hard, and that's super hard after my armor, and also that's super hard, uh, before I can heal. We did it, we, we literally <laughs> went south a little bit, and died. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's keep saving, let's keep going. And I didn't say I was good at this game, but again, it's that idea of just you just throw yourself at it, you just go for it. If anything, like this game is super pure in the sense of there's no failure state. You just continue. You just keep going, you know. So uh, there's a few. Let's see. If you keep going south, you end up kind of hitting nothing. It's just a there's just a wall and kind of spot where the enemies are harder for some reason. But I think if you go around... Hmm. 
pretty sure if you go around, you'll find something. Here we go, defeat the spooky, win the game. That's all you need. So I guess, yeah, Dragon Quest kind of went on to spawn a multi-billion dollar franchise and possibly one of Japan's very famous, like, kind of mascot-y things. Uh, it's weird, it's like, I knew of the slime well before I even learned anything about Dragon Quest. It's just, the slime's super iconic. And just the general, like, you know, orchestral nature of the, the soundtrack, the whole, like, you know, fusion of this, like, medieval fantasy mixed in with this kind of very light-hearted, um, just kind of, you know, you're, you're a hero and you're there to stop evil and here's all these kind of cute monsters, but they, they do attack and it's like, ooh, you got your magic spells. It's like, it doesn't take itself crazy seriously, but it's got just a fun tone about it all. Um, and I don't know if I'm really conveying it all through words, but I can, I can guarantee, like, in spirit, this game is just, oh, it's such a treat. Uh, oh, regular scorpion. Just regularly hit him. So uh, we got a bit of a bit of a pit here. I mean, I'll definitely say these enemies are just the much weaker ones. But if we travel over here, nope, <laughs> still can't see it just yet. Ah, it's a slime, ooh. There we go, so we've got a cave here. Now, like all caves, all caves are dark, but that's okay, because I've got Radiant. And now you can see, and we can actually see a bit more than we typically can. Oh, there's a Magician. Oh, magician's not too bad. Magician's not actually that bad, but... Uh, this one is a bit of a snaky tomb. My only issue, I guess, is that if I'm down here... Eh, I'm probably taking out the enemies pretty quick. Oh, there's a staircase. Okay, well, I'm not going down that staircase. The Scorpion King. Look for stairs. Look for stairs. I'll definitely say, uh, the Game Boy Color version really captures the idea that this is a rocky cavern. Because, uh, it totally doesn't look like a rocky cavern in the original version. Actually, I want to say this is, like, a very completely different dungeon as well compared to the NES. Which asks the question, where am I going? <laughs> Figure it out. There we go. Oh, there we go. The stairs. Deeper and deeper we go into the unknown, where we've got a uh, poltergust. Well, I'm dealing a lot of damage, apparently. So, that uh, 15 experience. That's how you know. That's how you know that they're not as strong as the wolves. I've been struggling fighting these wolves when I really didn't have to. I also didn't have to go down there, and now I'm at a dead end. Cool. <laughs> Wonderful dungeon. Oh, we got some water. Everyone likes some good old water. There we go, so let's wander around here. There we go. 350 gold. I'm gonna lose it all by dying, but that's okay. Still wandering around. Wandering around is good fun. Oh! I think my magic's running off. Okay, nothing is worse than your magic wearing off. 
Although, granted, I'm not really getting hit, so... It's not like I'm using the magic for anything else. Lots of spookies. Lots of spookies. Oh, there's a door. That uses a key, so... sure. Alright, we gotta deal with those second floor enemies, but shouldn't be a, too bad if it's just skeletons. Yeah, especially I can tank skeletons quite a fair bit now. And they still give me decent amounts of experience, so that's fun. So I think if I wander all the way around here, follow this wall, I should find me the goods. Apart from the poltergeist, poltergeist, sorry. I didn't just like go down here first. I mean, it's not like too hard. It's not too out of the way. Here we go. What's this? The straw seed. What's this? The mystic nut. The mystic nut. Oh boy. They love my mystic nut. But yeah, use that straw seed. Give yourself that random bit of strength. Mystic nut gives you some max MP as well, so that's cool. Um, I don't think they were even in the original version of the game. I think it's just like this one. This remake. They're just like, yeah, just give you some stat items. It's good fun. It's like, it's unabashedly just a numbers game. What's this? The war. The war. So I think. Uh, I guess I go into equipment. Iron, iron, leather. Equip the war. You can equip more more rings. What does the war ring do? Uh... Something. <laughs> Gives you an encounter. And the druid appears. He's casting fireball at me. That's fun. I think that's pretty much the gist of that dungeon. It's mostly just to get the... Hey, a level 10. And we learned stop spell. It does exactly what it does on the tin, it stops spells. We could stop druids if we attack them hard enough. Or they could just attack me manually, that as well. I think the other just kind of fun part about this game is, uh... Just, I guess, the general presentation. You got your little guy on the overworld. Which, I guess, that's a trend. I don't know, that's always been a thing, really. But then you got this, like, neat little first-person view, like it is wizardry, because I feel like a lot of, uh... Like, I guess Ultima kind of had the, you know, top-down, just, uh, oh boy. An iron shield? Oh, wow. I can't wait to equip it. That's actually better than my leather one. Sick. That's actually a sick go. Nice. Alright, let's use Radiant again. Now I can see... Oh, they suddenly attack now, do they? That's kind of cool, like, getting better armor. Maybe I should have been doing that the whole time. Oh, I hate this enemy. I just look at him and I just feel sadness. They don't, like, they don't hurt. They just... I don't want to look at them. I guess this is the kind of, like, odd part about this game in particular as well. It's, like, depending on how you want to define it, it could be classified as open world. Because you can just go from A to B, the only thing that stops you... Oh, the Drachima! This is not that bad, it's a yellow Drachy. We've had red Drachys, black Drachys... Um, I'm not gonna contract those two words. Oh. Uh, what's this, the torch? Okay. That, some things I need. That's a torch. 670 gold? Woo! Sheesh! I could actually buy me, like, the super good weapon, but you know what it is. We're saving up for the, the magic armor. Even though I'm probably gonna supersede it decently quick, but that's okay. Um, 
But it's like, yeah, I mean, you got all these dungeons lying about, you get items, relative to kind of how hard the enemies are, nothing particularly stops you from going anywhere. I think the only thing is, there's a bridge that's broken that leads to the final boss, you just need to pick up all the goodies, and, uh, there's one enemy, well, we'll get there. Uh, I have no idea where I'm going. Okay, there's the chest. So I think it's just wandering back now. Give him the big slap. 54 damage. I kind of like having the numbers pretty low as well. Sometimes you get number, you know, RPGs where the numbers just play so high up. But there's something pretty grounded about like starting the game at like 25 health and I'm still only at like 50. You know? Yet, and yet, the feeling from level 10 to 11, just, it feels substantial. It's like, there's, there's nothing that feels like without purpose in this game. It's filled with random chance and maybe, you know, a bit of trial and error, but it's also, you know, forgiving and inviting. I don't really know how to phrase it. I feel like perhaps I'm doing a bit of a disservice, but I swear, this game is super fun and if you have the ability to play um any dragon quest in particular but even just particularly the first one the first one is worth a play purely for just how raw and how like you know if you enjoy just the pure simplicity of walking around a dark dungeon constantly getting interrupted by a battle where the enemies take one or two attacks with a basic weapon or you might use a spell, you know, stuff like that. It's like... This game is like, it's charming. It's just... It is what it is, and it doesn't pretend to be more. If you want something that it pretends to be more, you play the second game. Obviously, it's like, you know, there are ways to make Dragon Quest bigger and better, and that's obviously how the whole franchise kind of went. But uh, I think also after Dragon Quest IV, they didn't particularly aim to outdo themselves by going up and, and, and larger, they kind of just keep going across. They keep taking the core mechanics that this game sets, do their own spin, do their own story twist, and call it a day. Drakima! Drakima! So, I think if you keep going further south, you'll end up kind of at another town, but I don't know if that town's going to wreck me. Or, like, the path there's going to wreck me. But I think you kind of have to, like... Let's see if we can get to the town. Even though I know you can only save in one place, but still. Aye. Where's the enemy that will wreck me? Yeah, okay, I think this guy's going to wreck me. Trust my... Yeah, okay, let's uh, get the heck out of Dodge. Nope. Nope, we are not getting the heck out of Dodge. Yep, we are... we are dead. Well, there goes all that money. This is disappointing, I'll give you another chance. But until then, please say it in. 669, that's a fun number. Uh, but I think I'll call it there, because I think... A seasoned warrior knows when to rest. Take all the rest you need. Boom, though, I will await your return. Um, if you're playing the NES game, it just stops there. The game's just like, yeah, no, you, you can turn it off. I'll let you. And it just doesn't let you, like, go anywhere. Um, other versions of the game, um, same deal. It's like the screen goes black and it's like, eh, ah, Brady, you'll come back later. Um, this version just kind of goes back to the main menu. But, uh... So, yeah, on the next one, we will just, like, go back in. We'll just hit uh, continue. Uh, I appreciate you can copy saves as well. That's, like, a subtle feature. Um, that was meet again. Uh, but I feel like this was a pretty eventful, just kind of first stream of this game. Uh, I got a lot of money. I wish I had more after dying a fair bit. But I got a lot of money. I have the triple iron right now. I just noticed that one. Um... Level 10, uh, got a bunch of spells, um, got the quest, I guess, and to be honest, kind of covered about half of the ground of the game. There's not like 
too many more places uh, that I haven't quite looked at yet, so... Uh, uh, but there's still a bit to go, so... Uh, until then, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. So if you did really enjoy this, uh, you can follow on YouTube or Twitch. Um, I am apparently at... I was at 100 followers, and now I'm at 99. <laughs> Uh, people aren't follow all the time, unsubscribe all the time, it's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you're on Twitch, you can follow where you'll get alerted that I'm just doing the stream again. Um, and if you're on YouTube, you can watch the VODs. And uh, other than that, you can also follow on my Pogroma or Activity Pub, whatever. Um, I have a blog that I don't really use. I really need to put, the, put more stuff on the blog. Um, but other than that, I think that's mostly it. So... For you at home, make sure you stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late like I have, because uh, oh boy, I'm feeling the fatigue set in, but that's okay. Um, that's about it. Don't let November make you really sweaty if it's hot, or if it's really cold because it's winter, because a lot of people live in the Northern Hemisphere and I don't. That's a bit of a problem. Oh, take care everyone. <laughs>